I have been talking about a point of view, the Joker's point of view, from which not only our social institutions, but also all the formations of the natural world are seen as games. Be careful of the word game. It doesn't mean as trivialities, because when we say it's just a game, this often means it is just trivial. There can be important games, as when we play the piano or musical instruments, we are not necessarily doing something frivolous, but we are playing. And there is something in the nature of all play that is not serious, but at the same time may be sincere. And I try to give you the picture of the multiplicity of natural forms on the one hand, and of human social institutions, and all the things that we do and consider important and busy ourselves with as human beings. I tried to give you the point of view from which these can be seen as games, as things being done, as it were, simply for themselves, and not for some ulterior motive. And therefore, these games are in a way best played when they are played as games. Although, it's really all right for people to take them seriously, except that they are a little bit deprived. They're missing something. And so when the Joker sees a person taking his life seriously and regarding himself as extremely important, there is something a little bit funny about it, and he is inclined to get the giggles. You might say there are these classes of people. There are the very far out people and the very far in people. Now ordinarily we say someone's very far out when they are oddballs, when they are exceedingly unconventional. But I want you to turn the picture around and look as a conventional person, look at a square as a person who's very far out. That is to say, he is so involved in the seriousness of the game he is playing that he is lost. He doesn't know where he started from and he thinks he's there, but he's completely lost because he is actually under the cover of his assurance, of his status, of his position in society. He's really a very anxious person. Our society shows anxiety because it cannot permit the existence of people who don't belong. And it cannot really permit the criticism of laughter. It cannot permit the presence of the old-fashioned court jester. Because these people are so far out, they are so involved and one from a certain standpoint, you see, from the Joker's standpoint, he doesn't condemn such people. He rather congratulates them on their heroism for getting so lost and involved. But to keep the far out people from going quite insane, there have to be far in people. And the far in people are those who keep contact with the original goings on behind the scenes. They are like the prompter in the theater where there are the actors out on the stage, relying on their memories, etc., and they're supposed to get completely involved in the play. But there's a concealed prompter with the script in front of him, and he is the connection of the actor on the stage with the green room behind the stage. And you see in, in this dramatic analogy of the universe, the green room is the central point, the still point of the turning world. The green room is how God is, when he's back home, not involved in all these games, and takes off the mask. See, on the Hindu theory that everybody is a mask of God, the like uh, wonderful line in one of Chesterton's poems. And now a great thing in the street seems any human nod, where move in strange democracy the million masks of God, the million masks of the Joker, because the Joker is the player, the trick player, who plays ultimately the great trick on himself. So really, there can be no resentment about this. Nobody to blame, nobody to turn around to in the end and say, you, you bastard, you did this to me. Because it's always you who are ultimately responsible.